Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemistry CC for You. Today we are going to discuss a few questions from the part of bio inorganic chemistry. I have previously done certain lecture videos from this part. I hope you have all seen that uh, already. If not, I'll be giving the link of these videos in the description box below. Please watch those and I hope that uh, this question, question series as well as the lecture series helps you a lot. And uh, let's begin without wasting much time. So the first question today is, which of the following is a water soluble vitamin involved in the metabolism of every cell of the human body and is also a cofactor in DNA synthesis? So we have four, uh, uh, four names here, niacin, pyridoxine, biotin and cobalamin. So previously in one of the videos, I have given the names of vitamins and their alternate names. And here, the main challenge is to identify the part which is the important catch in the question, which is cofactor in DNA synthesis. So there may be more than one water-soluble vitamin in, given in the options. So there, the important part is for you to identify which is the cofactor involved in the DNA synthesis. Let's see what the answer is. The answer is option D, cobalamin. So cobalamin is that water-soluble vitamin which is also a cofactor in DNA synthesis. Now here are a few rank ensuring tips. These are the names of uh, water-soluble vitamins and their alternate names as well. Here we have vitamin B1 which is also known as thiamine, B2 called as riboflavin, B3 called as niacin and B5 called as pantothenic acid. B6 known as pyridoxine, B9 called as folic acid, B12 which is cobalamin and vitamin H known as biotin. So biotin, uh, riboflavin etc were previously asked in some of the examinations and uh, I think even in 2019 Kuset entrance examination this question, question was asked and we have discussed these kinds of questions previously as well. Further. Here is a cheat code for you to remember what the names of the fat soluble vitamins. You can remember it as ADEC. So uh, vitamin A, D, E and K are the fat soluble vitamins. So if you remember this, it will be easier for you to identify the water soluble uh, vitamins give from the um, given options, given set of options in the multiple choice question. So this was your rank ensuring tip of the day. Let's move forward. So the second question here is, which is the main metal ion used to treat depression? When you have, uh, during our studies of uh, inorganic chemistry, when we were going through the usages of each of the elements, in, when we were studying the groups as such, we have already read this multiple times, but when it comes out of the blue, it will be difficult for you to answer. So here we are including this question. So Li plus Sb3 plus Au plus and Hg plus. The answer is option A, lithium. So lithium also known as oral lithium which is the lithium carbonate and we know lithium carbonate is derived from lithium. It is used to treat certain health conditions like mental health conditions like bipolar disorder as well as depression. So here the question was depression even if they have asked about bipolar disorder your answer should be lithium. So lithium is really important in the case of uh, treatment for mental disorders. Uh, and uh, next let's go to the third question now. Which of the following antibiotic acts as an ionophore that binds potassium ion and facilitates their transfer across the lipid bilayer? So previously we have learned about how the potassium channel works and how it moves across the lipid bilayer. So here the important point that you have to remember is one of the given antibiotic can act as an ionophore. So what does an ionophore do? It, it just binds to the ions that and allows to translocate or the transfer across the biological membrane can be have, can be done. So the uh, options given here are ciprofloxacin, clindamycin, valinomycin and metronidazole. And let's see the answer. The answer is option C, valinomycin. So valinomycin is that antibiotic which can selectively, remember the term selectively because it cannot translocate all the all the ions across the lipid bilayer but it can translocate potassium across the biological membranes and um, we have further given certain important points about this potassium ionophore it is uh, inhibiting proliferation and um, uh, blastogenesis that is the phytohemagglutinin stimulated blastogenesis and proliferation in human lymphocytes 
that is the biological importance of this ionophore and these are the two biological importance of this uh, ionophore and remember the term valinomycin it's an antibiotic now towards the fourth question in hemocyanin when copper is oxidized from its cu1 form to cu2 form the color change involved is so first of all the important point that you have to note down here is what is the oxidation number change that occurs during the uh, hemocyanin from its deoxygenated to oxygenated form so in the deoxygenated form hemocyanin exists as cu1 and in the oxygenated form it exists as cu2 and the color change is option a colorless to blue so in the deoxygenated state or cu1 as we have previously read about it um, the it has no color and when it turns to the cu2 form or the oxygenated form it gets a blue color further now let's go to the fifth question metal which is a part of the uh, glucose tolerance factor or gtfes aluminium chromium calcium and potassium as you know all the four metals given here are really important and uh, important uh, important for the biological system so option b is the correct answer which is the part of a glucose tolerance factor so what happened was uh, in early early 1959 certain mammals like rats shows the uh, glucose intolerance and they found that this glucose this phenomenon called glucose intolerance was reversed by a chromium containing component which is present in meat and certain other food and that particular component which contains chromium was called as the glucose tolerance factor or gtf and another important point is that chromium is an essential trace element so you should remember this term chromium is therefore a trace element and it is also a part of the glucose tolerance factor or gtf and it can reverse the process of glucose intolerance now next question is question number 6 here the iron in cytochromes usually exist in what catalytic intermediate what state in their catalytic intermediate so we have fe plus fe2 plus fe3 plus and fe4 plus so the answer is option d fe4 plus so the iron in cytochromes usually exist in ferrous and ferric state with a peroxo state found in the catalytic intermediate so it, the the main important in the um, stable state sits in the uh, fe2 plus and fe3 plus state uh, but in the intermediate state that is uh, intermediate state it acts as a peroxo state that is fe4 plus so iron in cytochromes exists in three forms fe fe2 plus fe3 plus and it has an fe4 plus state in the catalytic intermediate please keep this one in mind now the next question in pigment system 2 which molecule act as the uh, reaction center in the photoac so here so chlorophyll b650 option a uh, act as a antenna this is the prob uh, this is a question from photosynthesis so uh, chlorophyll b650 is the one that uh, act as a uh, antenna and therefore option a is the correct answer now the eighth question which of the following protein contains iron and is the primary form of iron stored inside of the cell so transferrin calmodulin methylothionin uh, tenin and ferritin are the options option d ferritin is the correct answer so ferritin is the uh, protein which contains iron and uh, in the form of ferritin iron is stored inside the cells now let's take a look at the other given biomolecules so transferrin is the protein which um, that binds iron and transports it throughout the body so it is not a storage protein but it is a transport protein which transports uh, iron into the blood um, and uh, calmodulin uh, acts as an intermediary protein that senses calcium levels and relays signals to various calcium sensitive enzymes and channels and other proteins so it has no relationship between uh, with iron but it is a calcium uh, it is it is a protein that senses the calcium level so the important thing is here it is a transport protein here it is a protein that senses calcium levels and metallothionins are family of proteins which are able to bind metals intracellularly so their main function is to regulate the cellular metabolism of essential metals 
so this can uh, it is not selectively binding or storing any one metal but these are able to bind metals intracellularly and regulate their metabolism inside the cells that is the uh, function of metallocarnins so these are the um, explanations of the other options so ferritin is the one which is uh, actually containing protein and store protein inside the cell next sorid band is retained in the spectrum with significant structural modifications of porphyrin macromolecule and it is found in the range so we uh, i have i will discuss about this term called sorid band in the coming lectures of spec spectrum spectroscopy so sorid band is retained in the spectrum with structural modifications of the uh, porphyrin macromolecule in a range of certain wavelengths so what is that wavelength it's option a 400 to 450 nanometer further the molar mass of uh, hemoglobin is approximately this question has been previously asked in many examination 50000 52500 55000 55000 and 65000 gram per mole the answer is option d it is um, almost 64458 gram per mole so we know that it has four subunits uh, hemoglobin subunits are uh, structurally very similar and has the same size and each of these subunit has a weight of 16000 dalton and the tetramer that is this four units together comprises of a weight of 64000 dalton so 64458 gram per mole that is the answer here let's move further for so the last question today is the hill coefficient nh4 hemoglobin is is it 1 2 2. 2.8 or 4.1 so the answer is option c 2.8 the hill coefficient should be 1 for a monomeric protein like myoglobin so we know that myoglobin is a monomeric protein whereas hemoglobin as we have discussed in the previous question is a tetramer and it consists of four subunits and these four units together make up the hemoglobin if it was a monomer it would be having a hill coefficient of 1 but if since this is a tetramer the hill coefficient is not 1 and it is equal to 2.8 and this 2.8 exists in the um pressure range of 1 kilopascal to 100 kilopascal now these are the sets of question that we are going to discuss but i need i want to discuss a little bit further about what this hill equation is so the affinity of hemoglobin towards oxygen binding can be explained on the basis of hill equation so oxy hemoglobin or we can say that the oxygen uh, the hemoglobin to which oxygen is already bound we can write this uh, equation as um, that is the k the constant as hemoglobin hbo2 n which is the uh, oxygen bound hemoglobin divided by the concentration of oxygen and the concentration of sum of concentration of oxygen as well as hemoglobin and now if f represents the fra fraction of hemoglobin oxygenated and p is the partial pressure of oxygen then k can be represented as k equal to f by 1 minus f into p and further for uh, hemoglobin which contains four heme units and has some more complex behavior the equation can be given as f is equal to k p raised to n o2 divided by 1 plus k p raised to n o2 where n is equal to 2.8 so this is the hill equation and f as we know is the fraction of heme oxygenated hemoglobin and that is given by this equation keep in mind the hill coefficient n equal to 2.8 for uh, hemoglobin which is a uh, which is a tetramer okay so that's all for today uh, i hope you are clear you are uh, you understood this um, this portion and as i have said i have done previously certain videos in the part of biomolecules i'll be if you have not watched those yet i'll be giving the link of so those videos in the description box below watch that and study really well i'll be updating you further about the coming lectures and um, soon we'll be uploading the second part of spectroscopy video thank you so much for watching if you have not subscribed our channel yet please subscribe and hit the bell icon for latest notification thank you and all the best do well